Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another episode of our Orchid Care for Beginners series. Today we have a good one. We're gonna discuss all about orchid pots. Which are the best orchid pots for your Phalaenopsis? How to choose them? What size we should use for what orchid? Many of my viewers always ask me in the comment section how to choose the perfect orchid pot. So today we're gonna find out just that. Before that though, today's video, as always, is sponsored by repotme.com, the web shop who provides you everything you could need for properly growing your orchids, from awesome media to appropriate orchid pots, fertilizer, and even pest control. If you're into other houseplants, such as bonsais or African violets, they have something for you as well, so I'll link you to them down below in the description. You can visit them at any time. And with that said, I think it's time to start the subject by talking about the purpose of the orchid pot. Now, the reason we use pots is to give our orchid a place to stay in our home. In lack of a real-life tree, which will be rather difficult to grow in a living room, pots make a great alternative home for a Phalaenopsis orchid. And in theory, we could use any type of pot we want, it will do the same job. But in practice, being that Phalaenopsis orchids are such special plants, some pots simply offer better conditions and are safer for orchids. These are the orchid pots, and you can see they look rather different than a normal pot. They're especially created to care for these unique needs that orchids have. First of all, Phalaenopsis orchids are epiphytic plants. This means they don't grow in soil. In their natural habitat, they do grow attached to trees. So they're never compacted and suffocated in soil, but rather enjoy the wonderful breeze around their root system. For this reason, orchid pots are very airy. Most designs will try to give as much aeration to the root system as possible. Whether it's a normal pot with slits, or directly a mesh or net pot, or even a design in between, most of these designs will try to avoid suffocation of the root system. Phalaenopsis orchid roots need much more air than any other houseplant. So now that we know a little bit more about the purpose of the pot, let's look at the most popular designs on the market at the moment, and then see how to choose the proper orchid pot for us. First, the most popular and used orchid pot on the market is the clear plastic pot. When you purchase your Phalaenopsis orchid, chances are that you will actually find it potted in one of these clear plastic pots. Now, there are a few designs available on the market depending on the quality and the brand. You can have pots which have an air cone here at the bottom, which improves aeration through the pot. Some of them even have extra ventilation slits on the sides together with the air cone, all of these pots have very good drainage at the bottom, and some of them are even treated against UV rays. So even if they're plastic, they are actually very durable in time. Clear pots are perfect for orchid beginners because they let you see the orchid roots, and that's really important. You will be able to see if your orchid is growing well, and also if you need to water it or not, as you will see if the medium is wet or dry. They will also let light reach the roots, so in return, the roots will photosynthesize and will be green. However, this can also lead to algae formation. A little bit of algae is absolutely fine, but sometimes if you have a very water retentive medium, the algae can get out of control. So the best thing to do is to limit light for the algae. Using a decorative pot will actually do the trick. You don't have to worry that your orchid roots don't receive light. Actually, the leaves are much better at photosynthesis than the roots. Without lights, the roots can perform normally. They will still absorb water and nutrients, but they will not form chlorophyll. So they will be rather white or yellowish. They're still healthy, don't worry, they just don't photosynthesize. If you want to use a decorative pot, make sure that there is space between the actual plastic pot and the decorative pot. We still want the orchid to breathe. Make sure that the rim of the plastic pot doesn't create a seal together with the decorative pot. That will definitely limit the ventilation of the roots. Even though plastic pots are a great option for orchids and definitely they will help you out if you're a beginner, some people prefer other types of pots, such as the clay pot, whether glazed or unglazed. Aesthetically, this is a much more appealing option, but it does differ slightly from the plastic pot. The unglazed clay pot has the advantage that it's always breathing. You don't need to have extra ventilation holes or slits, you only need a drainage hole. 
because the material itself is so porous that it constantly breathes. Now this can be a good thing, but also a bad thing. If you happen to live in an environment which is very dry or very hot, the clay pot might actually dry out very, very fast. More water retentive media are typically used with this type of pot. And I do actually talk more about these mixes and how to choose them according to your environment in our first video of the series. Check it down below. One of the major disadvantages of the unglazed clay pot is that it will stain in time. It can get white deposits due to the salts or even green algae on its surface. If you like the look, then everything is perfect, but sometimes you can even have all sorts of mold growing on it, so it might require a bit of maintenance from you. On the other hand, the glazed clay pot has none of these issues, because the glaze practically covers all of the pores. It's the equivalent of the plastic pot, but much cuter. Some glazed clay pots even have ventilation holes, so you won't need to worry about ventilation or suffocation of the root system. Pretty much, this type of pot combines the benefits of the plastic pot and the ceramic one. Clay pots are generally heavier than plastic pots. This again can be a good thing or a bad thing. These pots will put more weight to your shelf, but also they will stabilize the orchid better. As the water evaporates, an unglazed clay pot will actually get cooler through evaporative cooling. This might not be a good thing in cooler environments, but in warmer environments it might be absolutely fine. One recent design that has proved to be very efficient and quite enjoyed by orchid growers is the so-called carousel type of pot or orchitop pot. This is a plastic pot, it can be transparent or opaque, but as you can see, it is made out of plastic beams that are individually attached to the bottom of the pot. This gives extreme amounts of aeration, and orchids generally love it. This pot also comes with its own tray, and even though it's not very heavy, it is generally quite a lot heavier than the typical plastic pot, which can be a good thing because it can stabilize a big Phalaenopsis orchid, particularly when it's in bloom. The plastic is very durable and I have been using these pots for a few years already without any complaint. But with these pots, it is very important to think about the medium we are choosing for our orchids. As I was saying, they're extremely ventilated. And this has benefits for the orchid, but it also means that the medium inside will dry very fast. So if we use a medium which already is not very water retentive, we might actually have to water way too often. Net pots, sometimes called mesh pots as well, are another great alternative for orchids. The pot itself looks exactly like a mesh. It looks like a combination between a pot and a basket. And pretty much that was the intent with it. It's a very, very well aerated pot, as you can see. But shape-wise, it does remind more of the typical plastic pot. The mesh or net pot can actually dry out pretty fast, so a more watch retentive medium is more appropriate. However, you can also use a mesh pot inside a normal plastic pot without extra ventilation holes. And this is the actual oxygen core pot, which is available on RepotMe as well. It's again one of those newer designs, and it can have multiple applications if you don't really want to use very watch retentive media but you would like the water to sit more inside the pot rather than watering too often. And then of course you have the wooden baskets. Now typically these are considered Vanda orchid baskets. Vandas are another species of epiphytic orchids that we can grow, but since Phalaenopsis orchids are also epiphytes, they can definitely be grown in a setup like this. In the basket you can add medium or you can let it be just like that, but being that this is tremendously airy, especially without medium, it will require you to water very frequently. If you can grow your orchids outside, these are perfect because you can just water them every day, maybe with the hose. But if you'd like these baskets to retain a little bit of moisture, you can definitely add some medium. Now, if the type of pot you will use will be solely your choice, the size of the pot will not necessarily be the one you want, but the one that is appropriate for your orchid. So now let's talk about how to choose the correct size. When we decide on a size, we need to look at the available root system of the orchid, but also the orchid herself. We need to choose a pot which will be able to contain all of the existing roots, plus at least another half the amount the orchid has. So pretty much it needs to leave space for new roots to grow as well. 
Generally, we want to go one or two sizes up when we repot an orchid. This will make sure that the existing root system will fit, but potential new roots will have room to grow for at least two years as well. But sometimes we can deal with a not so healthy orchid which doesn't have too many roots, case in which we can actually reuse the pot it came in. What we typically don't want to do is go downwards with the sizes. An orchid will continuously grow given the right conditions. So assess the health of your orchid and if your orchid does have roots like the one I'm holding here, definitely you can go one size up. Phalaenopsis orchids are generally massive root producers and given good conditions they will create a big and impressive root system. Also, the roots are not thin. They can get very thick, particularly on standard Phalaenopsis orchids. So do keep that in mind and don't choose very tiny pots. You also don't want to use very big pots, so imagine this orchid in a pot like this. Yes, the root system fits and yes, new roots will fit as well, but look how much space I have in there. I can fit three more orchids if I wanted to. This is a little bit excessive. The problem with pots being too big is that they will retain a lot of water and it might just be a little too much for your orchid to handle. Water actually clogs air pockets and if they don't unclog in time, the roots can get suffocated and in the end, you can have a root rotted orchid. So besides being very, very well draining and providing extra ventilation through the use of an air cone or extra ventilation slits on the sides of the pot, the perfect pot should be able to contain all of the roots which were potted previously and also leave space for new roots as well. If you still seem to have problems deciding on a size, just look at the root system of your orchid in your mind, split it in two and imagine that your orchid will create at least half the existing size of the roots. So you will need to provide enough space for half the roots the orchid already has. Orchids don't mind being snug. The problem is the less room you have in your pot, the less medium you can arrange, the less water it will retain. So you will have to water your orchid very, very frequently to maintain its hydration requirements in check. The more airy your pot or basket is, the less you have to worry about size actually, because the size of the pot simply affects the levels of moisture inside it. So let's take for example the very confined pot. Obviously, we don't have a lot of ventilation in this pot, even with the ventilation slits and the air cone. It's simply not a lot of ventilation, so the water will be trapped inside for days even. But take for example the orchid top pot, or even a basket, which is incredibly airy. You can actually have a pretty big basket with a not so huge Phalaenopsis inside being absolutely fine. This basket is simply too airy to trap water inside. You have ventilation at the bottom, at the sides, and of course at the top. In nature, these orchids grow on tree trunks. So it doesn't matter the size because everything is just so airy. But because in cultivation and especially in our home, we find it easier to maintain them in a confined pot, we need to adjust our care and our culture in accordance to the container we use. The number one rule we always need to remember is that any pot, basket, carousel pot, clay pot, whatever pot you can think of, needs to be well ventilated. Water retention can be adjusted through the medium we use. That is the purpose of the medium. So for more information on that, do check our first video of the series on repotting orchids and the types of media we used. And that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this useful. And don't forget to check out the other episodes in the series if you missed them. I will link you to all of them down below together with more information on Phalaenopsis orchids, which I think you might find useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this in the future. A share would be wonderful. And until next time, have fun growing orchids. Bye.